but who knows what's going to happen here. I have a different message for you. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms, 92nd Psalm, 92nd Psalm, 92nd Psalm. Psalm 92, verse number 12. And it reads, The righteous flourish, thrive, prosper. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They are planted in the house of the Lord. Yet they flourish in the courts of our God. Right before you take your seat, turn to about five people. Tell them Merry Christmas and then sit down. (laughs) It's interesting, we can't give a full treatise, but it's interesting, a worthwhile exercise. For some, ignorance is bliss, and you prefer not to be bothered, and that's okay. But for for many in this place, it would be a worthwhile exercise to look at the origins of what we celebrate, the way we celebrate it. And often it's difficult to separate many of the traditions that we continue without finding their pagan roots are practices that, again, pointed to completely different realities than the ones we celebrate. Yet, there are folks in the midst of that who abstain from all of the festivities because the roots again, of some of the practices aren't found within the first the context of the first century church. However, over the years, we find that believers not only spoke of the redemption of mankind in Christianity by Christ, but also, in many respects, the redemption of symbolism, the redemption of practices and I don't have time to deal with all of it. You can Google it when you go home. (laughs) Whether it's the cross, that was equivalent to that picture of an electric chair in our day and age, if you were to contemporize the imagery. Could you imagine in the time of Christ, people walking around with an electric chair on their chain? Yet somehow through this work of Christ, this, this image is redeemed and has a new set of meaning. Likewise, many Christians have, in many respects, redeemed or created Christian parallels to some of the things that you see. I don't have time to go into all of it, but when I think about the Christmas tree, when I look at the Christmas tree, I, like many reformers and cultural architects who changed pagan pagan customs into those that provided divine significance, I I'm reminded of the biblical passage that compares the believer to a tree. It says the righteous flourish, they thrive like a palm tree, and they grow, they pace or form like a cedar in Lebanon. Say cedar. Cedar. They're planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of their God. It's interesting here, this passage, it's, it's a hybrid illustration of sorts that parallels the life of and development of the righteous to to a palm and cedar tree. He says, when I consider how 
a child of God grows, how, how they flourish. And when I think about God's development and pace of the believer, he said it's kind of like one tree can't describe it all. He says it's, it's kind of like a combination of a palm and a cedar tree. Well, it's been argued again through, throughout the, the, the centuries about what symbolism to keep, what symbolism to leave. It is rumored that Martin Luther, the great reformer, was walking through the forest and saw through the trees the stars, cut one down, put it in his house, and he compared this, this, this Christmas tree as we know it to the cedar of Lebanon or the evergreen tree. I don't know if he had this passage in mind, but when I think of the Christmas tree, I think of this passage. It declares that the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They'll flourish. They'll shine. They'll, they'll have attention. They're, he says, but they'll grow like the cedar of Lebanon, which is most likely connected to the picture that we have of the Christmas tree. Well, the word is sometimes used in a wider sense, Leviticus 14, 6, we see it there, for evergreen, cone-bearing trees. Generally, the cedar of Lebanon is intended. The Sidrus Labani is what is intended. Because it, it gives us a picture of the life of a believer. And here's what God says concerning your life this Christmas. He says, here's how I work. He says, I, cause, I will cause you to flourish. Oh, you're going to flourish. Look at your neighbor and tell them that's good news. He, said, he says, you'll flourish like a palm tree. He says, and if you excuse the street vernacular, uh, only a few of you will uh, resonate with this, but I couldn't think of anything else. He says, like a palm tree, you're going to go way up. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell them I'm blessed. I look back at him and tell him all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. All the way up. I'm all the way up. If I'm not there, I'll be there. God says, listen, you will, you will flourish. If you think about how a palm tree flourish, flourishes, it, it, it grows. It grows fairly quickly. It is, it is erect in nature. Don't have time to talk about it, but it's resilient. It, it bends but doesn't break. It, it, is, it is elevated. It is high up. You can see it from a distance. Interestingly, he says, you're going to shine. You're going to flourish like a palm tree. Yet he gives this paradoxical concept in this hybrid as he, as he pictures the believer as two trees, your journey as two trees. It's, he creates a bit of a paradox. He says, you're going to flourish like a palm tree. You'll be seen. You'll be visible. You'll be erect and elevated. He says, while you'll flourish like a palm tree, though, you won't grow like a palm tree. <sighs> he says, while you'll flourish like a palm tree, you'll go way up. He says, yet you will grow. When I consider your growth, when I consider your journey, when I consider your development, he says, you will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Let your neighbor tell him it's beginning to look a lot <laughs> like Christmas. He said, while you'll flourish like a palm tree, you're going to go up. He said, you will grow, you will develop like a Christmas tree, excuse me, like a cedar of Lebanon. The cedar is a type of the Christian. And while we can't deal with this exhaustively, let's look at a few points. Number one, the cedar is like a type of a Christian. Cedar trees were known to be beautiful trees. They were known for their splendor. They were known for their beauty. In biblical language, when they wanted to describe beauty, they would often describe the cedar tree, the cedar of Lebanon. It was known to be a, a beautiful tree. It was not by mistake but intention that God crafted you the way he did, down to your curly little toes. Are you with me? Look at your neighbor, tell them you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm not just talking about the way you're crafted on the outside, the way you put yourself together because you knew you knew how to work it out. Thank God for this day and age. We have things that can help us. Are you with me? 
But even if we didn't, I'm not talking about the external beauty. I'm talking about the internal beauty. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. If you knew that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, you wouldn't let people talk to you any kind of way. If you knew that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, you would walk into a room no matter how much money you had in your pocket with your shoulders back, your head up uh, with a brand new stride and swag. Are you still here with me? Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful from the inside out. Yeah, I have this treasure in this earthen vessel. The cedar of Lebanon was known to be beautiful, but also the cedar of Lebanon was known to be, ah, to all the fragrance lovers out there, God help us. The, 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 the cedar of Lebanon was known to be aromatic. You can walk where there's cedars of Lebanon or cedar trees, and you can smell. I love Christmas because when you walk in the house, you want to Smell it. Now, we had a false tree a couple years, <laughs> and they're so beautiful, you don't have to worry about the house burning down. You don't have to worry about it being straight. Hold it up. <laughs> Bend the leg. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the bristles being all over the place when you take it out after New Year's, or if you're like us, a month after New Year's. It's... You don't have to worry about fire hazards. Your father's a firefighter and telling you that this whole place can burn down if you're not careful if you don't carefully keep this water. But, but the one thing that the fake trees don't have uh, is the aroma. When he thinks about the believer, he parallels it to this evergreen, this cedar of Lebanon, probably because it was aromatic. You could, you could smell it. Now, while it's interesting that it parallels life of the believer, it does not simply mean that we smell good, but there is a parallel with smells. I can't deal with that exhaustively either, but when uh, the, the perfume was broken over Jesus' feet, the oil, the, and she wiped his feet, uh, and she, she perfumed his feet, you could smell the aroma all over the house. Perfumes were significant. They, that is why there, there, there was many people for months that could have been fed with the cost of the perfume. They paid greatly for it because the perfume was aromatic. It, 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 went, it preceded you. And while you left the room, good, good scent, you left the room, they, they could smell you had been there. That's why I love to put on good scent from time to time. My kids know my daddy was here. Even though I'm no longer there, my physical presence is gone, but my aroma is still there. Is it interesting that the Bible talks about the believer and what we offer as an aroma, even as it relates to our worship? The Bible says that our worship could be a stench in the Lord's nostrils. It's not postured from the right heart position, but the worship could also be a sweet smelling savor unto the nostrils of the Lord. Are you still here with me? But not only is our aroma a sweet smelling savor, savor or stench in the nostrils of the Lord, but we are actually called to be a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of others. As believers, we are compared to the cedar tree or the cedar of Lebanon because everywhere we go, people should be able to smell something of the essence, something of the fragrance of God on us. Question to you, what kind of aroma do you leave when you walk into, when you bring, when you walk into a place? What kind of aroma do you leave in a place when you leave a place? What, do, what are people left saying about you after they left? Yuck. <laughs> or, mmm, I wish they would just linger a little bit longer. We're compared to the cedar of Lebanon because of the aromatic nature of the cedar of Lebanon. We're not only compared to the aromatic nature of the cedar of Lebanon, but interestingly, while the palm tree will say we will flourish like a palm tree, the Bible says we will grow like the cedar of Lebanon. And can I tell you, this is one of the most frustrating comparisons in this entire passage. I promise I'll inspire you, but I've got to frustrate you first. Because in this day and age, we misunderstand the, the nature of growth in God and development in God. We don't let things slow roast in, uh, in the crock pot anymore. We, we want it instantaneously. Isn't it interesting that our faith mirrors our technology? We move from slow crock pot. I mean, we have all kinds of technology, and I thank God for technology. I'm not anti-technology, and I'm not trying to act like all the old technology is better than the new technology, because my wife just bought this thing called an air fryer. I don't know if you ever had that, but all your frozen food, shrimp tempur, fried rice, potatoes, you put them in that air fryer for 10 minutes and it tastes almost like scrunchos wings. I couldn't believe it. No grease? 
Not all old technology is better than new technology, but it's interesting when, when our faith mirrors our technology, when our walk with Christ mirrors our technology, we have a problem. And what I found is most televangelists are promising that if you sow your miracle seed today, you'll have the full harvest tomorrow. If you just open up your mouth in Shabbat in a service, it'll turn around by this time next week or by the time you get home midnight. Now, God can do all those things, but often he does those things for the immature, for those that he's doing a significant work within. He promises you, he promises you up front how high you will go. He promises you up front that you will flourish, that you will prosper, that he will make a way out of no way. He promises already that you will flourish like a palm tree. He says, but you will not grow the way a palm tree grows. He says, you're going to grow like a cedar of Lebanon. And while a cedar of Lebanon flourishes like a palm tree flourishes, the difference between the two is that a cedar of Lebanon grows slowly. I knew I wouldn't get the amens on that. Nobody wants to grow yeah, yeah. So nobody wants to hear that it's going to take 10 years for you to get where God wants you to be. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear go back to school and sharpen yourself up. You want the promotion because you shabbated the Lord. <laughs> nobody wants to hear. God will not only bless your miracle seed, but he'll also bless your investment as you learn more about the stock market. Nobody wants to hear. We want manna from heaven, but that's the immature that get fresh bread every day for doing nothing. But once they cross into the promised land and are mature, God still blesses them, but he blesses the seed that they sow and the harvest that they reap. Are you still here with me? Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're going to be blessed this season. But it may be slower. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you get through the frustration of God dragging his feet? Can you get through the frustration of God taking his time? Can you get through the frustration of God not turning it all around by this time tomorrow? Can you endure things getting worse before things get better? Because if you cannot, you will be a palm tree. You'll flourish. People can see you, but she'll be frail. He says, I'm not trying to make you frail. I'm trying to make you robust like a cedar of Lebanon and a proper foundation takes time. Look at my top. Proper foundation takes time. Proper, pr proper foundation takes time. It takes time. It takes time. It takes time. 40 years for a mature cedar of Lebanon. 40 years for a mature cedar of Lebanon. Isn't it interesting that the children of Israel walked around? God, I wish I had time to work this like I want to. In the wilderness for 40 years before they ever made it in the problem. 40 years for a cedar of Lebanon to become mature. 40 years of going around in circles until you learn your lesson. That's when God slow roasts you. That's when God doesn't just bring you into the blessing because he knows if he fast tracks the process, you'll get into the blessing and lose the blessing. But we've seen too many flash in the pans shine now, but nowhere to be found later. We've seen too many people with a meteoric rise go to the top, but their character cannot maintain the elevation that their gift brought. God said, I'm going to take my time with you. It is not that I'm punishing you. It's because I love you. God, I don't know who I'm talking to. Let me try this side. I know it's Christmas. But I'm taking my time not to frustrate you or to kill you. I'm taking my time so that there is longevity in your construct. A cedar of Lebanon, the trunk could be eight and a half feet across. Look at your neighbor and tell him, God's building me and that takes. Yeah, so chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. The most frustrating thing is to be a cedar but surrounded by palm trees. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you've got to know who you are. Because as if you're a cedar surrounded by palm trees, sometimes you'll get distracted by how quickly it comes from everybody else for to everybody else. But you have to remember, I'm not looking for instantaneous blessing. I'm not looking for instantaneous transformation. God, I want the stuff in my life that'll last. Don't make me a punk. I want to flourish, but I want to flourish in your time. I want to flourish but I want to flourish your way. I want to flourish, but I want to grow as wide as I do high. Lord, take your... I, I, 
do I'm slow, but y'all better wait on me, wait on me, wait on me. I'm coming. I'm on the slow train, but I'm coming. I'm going to get there. And when I get there, I will be steadfast, unmovable. I'm going to try to lecture. I'm sorry, it's Christmas. It's from Christmas. Christmas. Look at your neighbor, tell them, let the palm trees floss on you. Let the palm trees ride in their new car. Let the palm trees wear their designer clothes. I'm not distracted by that. I'm going to get all that stuff, but I'm going to get my stuff God's way. And Lord, if you have to take your time, take You don't believe me because you don't see it in the gospel. I have four minutes and 55 seconds. But if I did have time, I'll tell you, Jesus said the same thing. When the devil said, all you have to do real quick is bow down to me, and I'll give you everything your eyes can see. That's a palm tree blessing. He said, I don't want a quick blessing. He said, but if I have to go to the cross, if they have to hang me high and stretch me wide, if I have to have a spear in my side and go to the grave, come back to get my blessing, I'm going to go through God's slow process to get the name that is above every other name. Does it take a quick bow for you and get it the easy way? Look at your name and come, I'm not a palm tree. I'm a leader of Lebanon. I'm, I'm a Christian. Let's talk. Let's talk. We're done. We're done for real. That's it. We're done for real. Don't hit me no more, man. We're done for real. I just want to talk. Matter of fact, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, but go ahead and praise him if you want to. Now, now, if you're sitting next to somebody that's looking at you like they're crazy, they don't know you just received the confirmation because God was moving slow. You got frustrated because when God was taking his time, you almost gave up. But look at your neighbor and tell them, I just realized I'm not a palm tree, I'm a cedar. By the time I'm finished, I'm going to go wide and I'm going to go high and my leaves shall not wither, but I'll receive. Look at your neighbor and tell them, shine, 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 shine. No, we, got, we, got, we got visitors, it's Christmas, it's visitors. I, I don't want to embarrass our visitors, I don't want to embarrass anybody. But somebody's been in a holding pattern for too long, and you thought God forgot about you. God sent me in here to declare, He didn't forget about you, He's just growing you. Because a palm tree only lives for a fraction of the time. But there are cedars of Lebanon that are 1,000 to 3,000 years old. In other words, there are still cedars that are around from the time that this passage was written. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, when God does this in my life, I'm here to stay. I'm not from bad boy, but we ain't going nowhere. No, no, no. Tell somebody what God does in me is going to last. I'm going to grow. I'm going to shine. And I'm going to flourish in the course of my God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I wish I had time to work this, but I don't. A palm tree is high, but a cedar, it, a cedar's branches are lifted up. A cedar's branches are wide, and it's not only high, but it's wide. Tell somebody, God is growing me. Listen, we're all out of time, but if we had time, I would tell you that the last revelation about the cedar tree I love, last revelation is 
that it flourishes in environments that kill everything else. <laughs> I, I was reading, I was reading an article not long ago, and it said the cedar tree is in danger in Lebanon right now. And the reason that the cedar tree is in danger is because of global warming. I said, what do you mean? It said, because of global warming, there's not as much snow as there used to be. And the cedar tree needs snow to flourish. It needs the cold to flourish. When everything else in the adorning world as we know it dies under the frigid air and heavy snow, the cedar tree is still flourishing. Its leaves are still green. It's still shining in the midst of atmospheric adversity. And God sent me to tell you that you are not a palm tree. You don't need sunshine to flourish. But whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether you have money, whether you're broke, whether you have name brand on your back, or whether you have Kmart on your back, God sent me to declare, whatever the environment, you shall flourish. Your leaves shall be green. You will bring forth good fruit in season. Touch somebody, tell them, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. You're a cedar tree. A cedar. A cedar tree. A cedar tree. Hallelujah. Grab somebody by the hand. We're all done. I tell somebody you're a cedar tree. That's why you can't break. You're a cedar tree. That's why what killed everybody else only made you stronger. It didn't take your shine. It didn't take your praise. It didn't take his glory from your lips because you're a cedar tree. You were made for adversity. You were made for difficulty. You were made to blossom in what destroys everything else. Can I close for real? The Bible says you will flourish or you will grow in the house of the Lord, but you will flourish in the courts of your God. If you see that picture, your growth happens in the house. Your flourishing comes in the court. Your growth happens in the house. In the house where nobody can see it publicly. So they don't know. This is why you shouldn't wait to find a friend and to show somebody love. You shouldn't wait until they blow up. But look at your neighbor, tell them you don't know who you're standing to, next to. Because my growth happens when nobody can see it. But my flourishing is seen in the courtyard for everybody to see it. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't dismiss me. Because you can't see the evidence. Oh, I'm, I'm somebody. I'm, I'm somebody. God is doing something. He's not finished with me yet. You just can't see it yet. Don't wait to celebrate me too late. Don't wait till the world sees it. But he's doing it in his house so that it can be seen before all. Can I give you one more revelation? I'm done. The cedar tree was valuable. It's wood for construction and building. Because even after it was cut down and gone, dead, its wood was valuable because it did not corrode like the rest of the wood. An interesting other wood was eaten by worms. But the cedar wood, even after it was dead, repelled the worms and stayed
stayed intact. God gave me one last revelation. And he showed me that even after this life is over, we praised him for what he's going to do now. But God told me even after this life is over, he said, your body shall not see decay. Worms will not eat away at what is eternal. But what is built now will begin in time. But it will flourish through eternity. And so, God, we thank you that every time we look at the Christmas tree, we don't remember pagan origins. We don't remember Saturnalia. We don't remember winter solstice. But as we look at the Christmas tree, we're reminded of the passage that declares that the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and they shall grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Now, God, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for the birth of your son that changed everything for us. Now, Lord, May we embody every word spoken. May we see ourselves, our growth in you, in our journey as cedars of Lebanon, which will be established for your glory into eternity. And now, Lord, we give you glory for it. honor, praise, and all those who agree believe in the prayer and believe that God will do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ask or think according to the pattern that was at work within us. Power that is at work within us. We give you glory. In Jesus' name.